you go. So without any further delay, um, Mr. Zach Cunningham. So what's up guys? Um, my name is Zach Cunningham and I put together this presentation about success for you guys. I have to give some credit to my girlfriend because she helped me edit it a little bit. And yeah, let's get it started. So about me, uh, I'm a military brat, right? My dad was in the Air Force. Um, I've lived in four states and I've been to 40 and I've traveled to three different continents um, so far. I'm a former student and graduate from El Segundo High School and I'm currently getting my um, communications degree at El Camino College and plan on transferring to the University of Arizona Online Extension Program. Um, and I also teach Gracie Jiu Jitsu on a daily basis. So what to know about communications? If you'd rather give a presentation and take a test or write a paper, um, communications might be something for you because it's just a lot about you know, talking and presenting you know, facts. Uh, especially if you don't like math as well, that could be something that you know, kind of steers you towards communications because that was my plan. That's why I was in Miss May's classes where I wanted a business degree, just something basic and something you know, um, in business. And I really found out the older I got, the more I realized I didn't like math at all. You know what I mean? Uh, and communications doesn't have as much math, so that's also why I chose that. Uh, and just in general, if you like talking to people, whether it's one-on-one -on -one communication, uh, small group communication where it's like four to eight people, or even big group communication where it's 60 people, maybe 200 people, um, the communications could be the degree for you. Right? It's very interesting to see just the science behind how we communicate and how we can get better at it. Um, and communication skills is the number one thing lacking in our generation society currently. So it's very important that someone studies it, right? Um, quick history of Gracie Jiu Jitsu. So Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was created by Elio Gracie in 1925 in Brazil, right? And then once that was created and established its roots in uh, Brazil, his oldest son, Elio's oldest son, Horion, moved to the United States in 1978. And he also created the UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championship, in 1993. Once that happened, uh, Horion's sons and Elio's grandsons, Hiron and Henner, who are my bosses, uh, created the first online platform for Jiu Jitsu called GraceUniversity.com in 2006, where it's just all Jiu Jitsu curriculum um, on that site, right? So people can study if they don't have a school to go to. And then they also currently run the world headquarters in Torrance, California. And my role is that I'm the youngest lead instructor at the Gracie Jiu Jitsu World Headquarters, who represents the Gracie family in Torrance, California. Um, so what my career consists of, right? There's a lot of great opportunities being with them, you know, especially because they literally created Jiu Jitsu, right? Or uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu. So there's a lot of travel opportunities, a lot of exposures, um, opportunities I'm very blessed to have with them. And as I said, it's the world headquarters. So most schools, you know, run an operation where they have about 60 students, maybe 200 students. That's a great Jiu Jitsu school. And this one has over a thousand students, right? And obviously not all at once. They're divided with kids classes and adult classes and uh, woman empowered classes. But just right here alone, this was probably a crowd of 200 kids um, at where I work and me teaching right here um, in front of them. So it's a huge opportunity and you know, I'm very blessed to be able to be under them and working with them, right? And of course I love it, Jiu Jitsu is my passion. Um, so yes, next slide. Let's be clear, right? I'm doing all these cool things in my life, but in high school, I wasn't the best student, I was a C student. And Miss May can tell you, I barely graduated like, by the skin of my teeth. It was, it was really close, you know? Um, and I always told myself that I would never be back here once I graduated because I hated every second of high school. I really did, right? Um, however, Miss May chose me to come here and talk about success, and Miss May is important, so you know I had to come back. So high school summed up. Uh, you might have seen this picture before, um, where there's this guy right here, the professor. He's telling all the students, "All right, to be fair, we're all going to take the same exam, so let's climb that tree." And the monkey's super happy, you know what I mean? Because that's all the monkey does. Then the fish is like, oh man, what am I gonna do? You know what I mean? I can't climb a tree. And I felt like the fish in high school. You know, there was no way I could climb the tree. All I know how to do is swim. Um, but at the same time, even though I was the fish, 
in high school, Miss May still chose me out of everybody who came here to come to you guys and talk about success. Um, so, you know, why? And the answer is, is because of the unique life experiences I have that no one else my age has, right? Um, the ones that I wasn't handed to, but I worked extremely hard for every day. And even during those tough times where I was struggling and not getting the best grades, I still tried my best, I still applied myself. And it's important to realize too that even though I struggled in school, um, I still tried my best and not only apply myself, but stand out from the crowd and just be unlike everybody else going through life. And um, I still strive to do that to this day, you know what I mean? Hard work beats talent every day of the week and talent doesn't work hard. So just always keep that in mind. So what happens in high school does not determine your success. Just realize that. It's very important, right? Um, I really genuinely couldn't tell you who valedictorian in my class was. In two, I graduated in 2016, and it's only been two years, and I, I don't even know the guy or the girl. I don't know who it was. Um, I don't know what they're doing with their life, if anything special at all, right? However, I'm the one up here right now talking about success. I wasn't valedictorian. I wasn't smart. I was just... I mean, I was smart in my own way, I guess, but, <laughs> you know, I wasn't, like, book smart. You know what I mean? I had a lot of struggles. Um, so why? Why am I even here right now? You know what I mean? This doesn't really make sense. But it leads to the next question. What is your definition of success? Who can tell me? Like, who has an idea? You know, what is your definition for real? Any? What do you guys think? Any answers? Shocker? What's up? Uh, not exactly. I was thinking I don't know where I was thinking of it, but I guess it'd be accomplishing what you want to do with your life. I love it. Yeah, accomplishing what you want to do with your life. But what is that? Like, let's dig deeper. What do you guys think? Some success. Like, what is success? What is your definition? Any other ideas? Yeah. I want to leave a positive legacy. Leave a positive legacy. It's so good. What else? Anything else? I love it. It's so cool. I was telling the other class, right, that when I came into today, I was expecting to hear a lot of things that doesn't define success, like money or cars or things like that, right? But really, in my opinion, my definition of success is happiness, right? My belief is that in life, happiness is the most important thing above all, right? Have a passion for life. Be excited about all the opportunities out there you can take advantage of and achieve, and don't just waste it all on your phone. Right? Be excited about leaving that positive legacy. You know what I mean? About doing what you want to do with your life and achieving that. You know what I mean? Um, it does not matter how much money you make, what car you drive, how many likes or followers you get on Instagram, what you do on the weekends. It just matters that you are healthy and making the healthy choices for yourself. Right? So choose your happiness over others. A great you know, couple of examples in my life was that um, when I was in high school, I've been doing jujitsu since I was 13 years old and I'm almost 21 now. Um, yeah, it was in high school, all my friends would tell me, Zach, jujitsu is stupid, just quit. You know, jujitsu is a scam, you're wasting your time, you're never gonna be able to achieve anything but jujitsu, just quit. And it was kind of hard for me, so I was like, man, these are my friends, you know, and their opinion matters to me. I don't wanna lose them. At the same time, I have to choose my happiness over theirs, right? Jujitsu makes me happy, so I'm gonna keep doing that. And uh, it turned out great. <laughs> and then this other example I have is kind of funny, right? Um, it happened to me this year where I met this girl, and you know I was like, oh my gosh, head over heels about this girl. It's crazy, like perfect connection, very similar, we're very alike. Like she's like the one, you know. And I had my friends um, who I've known for years. I told them about her, like, hey, you know, do you think I should date her? What do you guys think? Um, and they all told me, all three of them, they were like, no, don't do it. You know, she's gonna hurt you. you know, just, just avoid that at all costs. And because I was like, man, these are my friends that I've known for years, I don't think they're gonna steer me in the wrong direction. So I was like, all right, I'll listen to my friends. Um, and it turns out that one of them was just lying about everything, and the other two tried to ask her out right afterwards. Crazy, right? So, you know, luckily for me, um, Things worked out and through time, the truth came out and we're back, we're dating, me and this girl, right? Um, so that's super exciting. And, you know, the crazy part, right, that I realized is if I just chose my own happiness over 
their happiness and their opinion, right, because it just made me happy and that's all that matters, that whole mess of a situation would have never happened in the first place. But of course there's positives, like I found out who my real people are, who I can trust, who I can't, um, and that's important in life as well. So you can always make the most out of that situation, but still, it could have all been avoided if I just chose my own happiness, right? Um, so how can we be happy? This is for you to decide. He's the best, but the best tips I can give you is to not be afraid of being yourself, right? Uh, be original, be optimistic, and don't settle for anything less than you deserve. You are the one that knows yourself the best, so make the best uh, choice for you. And always try your best to believe in yourself, even when you feel like you can't. And when life gets frustrating, because let's be real, guys, it's going to happen. I'm sure it's happened to all of us, where life just, you know, it gets irritating. You, it's impossible to be happy every second of every day. It really is. Um, and emotions, they're like a balloon, right? Everybody feels emotions. Everybody feels happiness, sadness, anger, fear, frustration, right? That's all normal things to feel. Uh, and what happens is when you feel these things, naturally, it's like air going into a balloon and the balloon expands. But what happens if too much emotions are in that balloon? Yeah, it pops, done. And you can never get that balloon back, right? So the key, when we feel these emotions and we don't want to fill the balloon too much, then we need to have this air release valve, right? Mine is jujitsu, where I can just, ah, you know, let go of everything and everything's good. And it, brings out some of that tension, some of that emotion that I feel. And I'm sure everybody has their air release valves of your own, but if you don't, you have to find one because it's critical to have that, right? Um, and the major key to frustration in general is that if you ever feel it, just make the most of it. Take advantage of it, and you know, great things can be born through that struggle and frustration like this. This is uh, my good friend and my boss, Henner, who created the Hero Hoodie. Just through pure frustration. And this is a little video, guys, I um, wanted to show you guys. Sorry, the night before, so I'm wearing my favorite hoodie. It's a chilly morning, and there came a time where I'm chasing after my son, and it was, it was getting warmer, so I start sweating inside my hoodie. And naturally, I take it off, and it didn't turn it around my face, but at that moment, I remember thinking, I don't want to be that guy. So I took the hoodie instead, and I threw it loosely over my shoulder. My son is now running off, and I finally catch up to him. And when I do, I bend over to pick him up, and the hoodie slides off my shoulder and falls onto the wet grass. And when this happens, at that very moment, I remember thinking, there has to be a better way. So I scoop up the hoodie, scoop up my son, we head home eventually, and all I can think about is finding a solution to this ridiculous problem of carrying an unworn sweatshirt. When I get home, I find paper clips, shoestrings, scissors, duct tape, and the hoodie that I was wearing, and I lock myself in the office. In less than 30 minutes, I have a fully functional prototype, a hoodie that turns into a backpack. There were only two problems. Number one, there was no additional storage space in the backpack. And number two, the conversion technology would only work on a hooded garment. Fast forward eight months and over 15 prototypes, and we finally cracked the code. A beautiful hoodie that converts into a fully functional backpack in a matter of seconds with ridiculous storage space for large items and small items. Realizing this had never been done before, I patented the conversion technology internationally and domestically. One of the biggest engineering challenges was to find a way to make the backpack straps adjustable. Otherwise, you have a loose backpack that is, you know, whipping and swinging around during any kind of high intensity activity, which is the main problem with those popular drawstring backpacks that everybody sells. So for me, I had to find a way to make the clips adjustable, and the problem was the only kind of cord locks that existed for this type of purpose were those plastic ones with the spring on the inside, and even though those held the rope pretty decently, the challenge was when you convert the backpack back into hoodie formation, you feel these plastic springs digging into your back out of the question. So literally, I'm racking my brain for weeks trying to think of a simple, adjustable clip that anyone can do, is quick and effective, and you would never feel when you are in hoodie formation. And you guys won't believe where the idea came from. I'm 
sitting at my desk. I open up my drawer and I'm looking for some tape. In the same drawer are some tweezers. And it just hit me in the face, you guys. I pull out the tweezers, I run the shoestring through the joint of the tweezers, and it catches tight. And voila, a compression lock that basically is a small metal device, very thin, about a millimeter thick, and has a Christmas tree cut out for it at the top. You can slide and bite the rope at any height. It's so easy that literally anyone can do it. And the best part is because it's only about a millimeter thick, you feel absolutely nothing when you're wearing your hoodie. So basically, we created the world's flattest cord lock. And of course, I patented that design as well. And the best part about all of this is that this conversion technology can be applied to any outerwear garment on the planet, whether it's a sweatshirt, a jacket, a raincoat, a snowboarding jacket, whatever it is, we got you covered. So our plan is to make all garments convertible so that you never have to tie a sweater or a jacket around your waist again. Throughout this process, I have learned so much, you guys. Most significantly, that the best inventions are born in the simplest moments of frustration. So the real question is, how many of our everyday challenges, frustrations, inconveniences have yet to be solved? And when you begin to look at the world this way, you realize that not only should you not be running from problems, you should actually be paying someone to identify problems for you. And when a problem is identified, you have two choices. You can either sit around hoping that someone's going to solve this problem for you, or you can get to work at it yourself. So the bottom line is this, every problem is an invention waiting to happen. And if I can turn nothing into something, why can't you? So super crazy, right? And just to show you guys that it's real, I brought mine in. So it's literally just, if it gets too hot, you take it off, you flip it upside down, reach in, pull the sweatshirt in, and it goes into the bag right here, right? And that's it. And you shake it out a little bit, and there's some space in there if you want to put stuff in, adjust the straps, you're good to go, right? Now it's a backpack. So, yeah, it is so cool, right? Because literally, it was just through pure frustration he came up with this idea, and um, if you want yours, you can get yours at quickflipapparel.com. Um, but it's amazing, right? Because really, Henner, believe it or not, is human, right? Henner is one of the most amazing, hardworking, and dedicated people I've ever met in my life. And I've been around a lot of people. Um, but that's the thing, Henner is just a human being. He's just like you and me, right? And I like to say this little phrase where, if it was impossible, no one would do it. A lot of people, they, they might have just saw that video right now on Henner and been like, ah, you know, Henner's amazing, so I can't do that. But the thing is, if he can do it, you can do it, right? If it was impossible, he wouldn't have even been able to do it. Same thing with like college. A lot of people, they see college, like, ah, you know, I don't know if that's an option for me. But really, if it was impossible, no one would have a college degree or be a doctor or be a lawyer or whatever the case may be. Um, just always keep that in mind. It was impossible, no one would do it. And if Henner can make a hero hoodie, this invention on top of everything else he has going on in his life, and I'll tell you right now, it's a lot of stuff he has going on, um, then I guarantee you that if you can just dedicate yourself a little bit, and if you come up with something like this, your own version of hero hoodie, you can change the world like he did. So, yeah, I lost my clicker, there we go. <laughs> so yeah, so many outcomes could have happened, right? Henner could have gone home and just complained to his wife Eve. He could have just stayed angry. He could have just disregarded the situation and been like, oh, it is what it is, and you know, never think about it again. But instead, he found what was missing that caused the frustration in the first place and just made the most out of it and capitalized it on such a huge way. Right? This is how he became so successful. He didn't complain, he just created a solution. And that's really leads me to the next topic, right? where I think the number one social issue due to life's frustration is complaining. A lot of people love to complain. Um, and I had this story where in January I was in Peru, um, just on vacation, it was like seven days, 
and you know, it was an amazing trip. And I remember at the end of the trip, coming back home, I was gonna go from Lima, uh, Peru, to Houston, to LA. It was like 18 hours of travel, um, if you include the delays and stuff, and it was crazy, right? But I remember I'm waiting in line to get on the plane to go to Houston, um, and there was this family next to me. It was a mother, a daughter who was about like 15 probably, and um, a brother who's 11, maybe 12 tops. And the, yeah, the daughter had this coffee. Like she had the coffee in her hand, she's drinking it. And I see the whole situation where the brother comes and accidentally bumps into her. It was a little crowded, you know what I mean, in the line. And the coffee spilled everywhere on the floor. And all of a sudden the, the daughter, you know, had the coffee, just screaming at the brother, chewing his head off, like, how could you do that? You know, and it went on for like two minutes, three minutes, where she's just like, bah, 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 crazy. And then the mother comes in to try to settle the situation, and she just starts screaming at the mother, you know? She's like, don't defend him. And it just went off, it was insane. And then it got worse, because after that, all three of them start complaining about, who's gonna clean this copy? Nobody's here to clean it yet. This is ridiculous. And it was just a mess. And whatever, copy got clean. Um, it wasn't a big deal. You know, and there's definitely better ways to handle that situation, you know? Um, and I think the reason I remember it so much is because, you know, I was just in Peru for seven days in a developing country, and I was having these realizations. I was like, man, I'm so grateful for the life I live, to be able to teach jiu-jitsu for a career, and have three meals a day, and have a home, get an education. You know, there's nothing better than that. Like, I'm, I'm very blessed. And then they're just standing over here complaining about coffee still, you know? But it is what it is. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind that people love to complain, and you don't want to be one of those people. It, I actually had this assignment in college where it was just a simple assignment where all day um, I had to write down every time someone in my environment complained. It was, I write the name and then just one little sentence next to the name that said what the complaint was, just one sentence. And I remember I, I got like 25 to 30 complaints in one day, you know, big list. And I wasn't expecting that much, but it happens like that, you know? So as soon as you realize it, like, man, crazy people complain so just try not to be that and I know I'm complaining about complaining but it's important to realize how much we complain <laughs> you know uh, so what does this mean this means don't complain right be grateful be inspired be motivated and stay hungry this is literally just the beginning right now right as you guys know as I said earlier I struggled a lot through high school um, so my daddy would always tell me that Zach you know high school is like this much of your life right even if you include college, it's this much of your life where it's like 12 to 16 years that you have to devote to just school. But then really the rest of your life is this. Because after you're done with those 12, 16 years, you have about 60 left on the back end. How crazy is that, right? We don't really realize that because we're going through every day, you know, just high school. And right now high school is everything we have because it is you. It's what your life is, you know, being devoted to at this moment. So everything that happens, they're like, oh my gosh, this is everything. This is my whole life. But it's not. There's 60 years left afterwards. So just realize that. You know what I mean? And if you can add an optimistic approach or a sense of beauty to what life has to offer and your arsenal of tools that make you who you are, you're going to be unstoppable. And I know it sounds cheesy, but like I said, a lot of people, they just rather complain instead of trying to find the solution or deal with the frustration that they feel, right? And instead of having that optimistic approach and beauty to what life has to offer. So what you need to take away from today, right? Um, be yourself, you know, it's super important to be yourself. Find your happiness, make healthy choices for yourself and not anyone else. If you split up the word impossible, it says I'm possible. And take advantage of that frustration we feel. Don't be scared or miss out on the opportunities life has to offer, right? I know it can be scary, and it's okay to be scared because that's something we all feel, right? But don't let that take advantage of you. Never doubt yourself and never doubt your capabilities, right? Lastly, um, this is a quote I came up with, that if one son can put a light on the whole world, so can one person, right? So yeah, I'm just trying to spread this quote around and just, you know, 
look at this and hopefully you can see that one, you can find your own light that makes you happy. And two, you can just be that light for other people. Right? And that's all I got for you guys today. So yeah.